Okay, so in this uh, in this buoy problem from your practice, in this buoy problem, it said the buoy um, floats up and down in the bay. The difference between the high point and the low point was three feet. Okay, the difference between the high point and the low point was three feet. Um, it takes eight seconds to go from its high point down to its low point and back up to its high point. So they basically told you it takes eight seconds to complete one full cycle, which is the period, right? Um, they want you to write an equation that represents the height of this buoy, assuming it starts at its equilibrium point. So that's like saying it starts at sea level or it starts at its midline and is on its way down from the point when t equals zero going forward. So here's the graph that would represent what this buoy is doing. We're starting in the middle, we're headed down, we go back up, and so on and so on and so on. It takes eight seconds for it to complete one full period. Our job is to write the equation for this. Okay? So to write our equation, you first might want to think, am I going to write a sine equation or a cosine equation? Sine. To decide which one, think about where the sine function starts versus where does the cosine function start. Okay? Your sine curve starts at the origin and does this. Your cosine curve starts up at 1 and heads down. Okay? Sine starts in the middle, cosine starts at the top. This starts in the middle, so I'd use sine. Okay? Now, sine starts in the middle and heads up. This one is starting in the middle and heading down. So it's a negative. So it's going to have a negative coefficient, negative A value. Okay? How do we know that, though? Like, how do we know that it starts at zero? You told us. In the problem, okay, that I had up on the screen before I had to shut it off, mess with technology here, it said in the problem, assume the buoy is at its equilibrium point, headed down when t equals zero, is what it said in the problem. Okay? okay. okay. So it, it had to tell us that, Joey, is I guess what I'm saying. Okay. It'll have to tell you that. Because, yes, if you don't know where it's starting, then you don't really know whether to use sine or cosine. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It told us that. So, we know... We're using sine. A is our amplitude. And in this case, what's the amplitude? 1.5. 1.5. That's how far above and below the middle the graph goes. But instead of using a positive 1.5, we're going to do a negative 1.5 because the graph is headed down first. Is there a vertical shift, or is the middle still the x-axis? Middle is still the x-axis. Middle. middle is still the x-axis. There is no vertical shift. It hasn't been moved up or down any, so you're not even going to have a d-value. In this case, you're also not going to have a phase shift, because the graph starts in the middle, just like your regular sine curve starts in the middle. So the only thing we need to adjust is the b-value, because the period is not 2 pi. The period is 8. So how do we determine the B value if we know the period is 8? 2 pi. Well, I just have a question. Yeah. So you said around <coughs> D, since it starts at 0, that we won't have like any shift or anything. But what if, it, if it started at positive 1, wouldn't we use cosine? Two pi. But you could also use sine with a positive 1. Mm. Uh, good question. No. The D value is always the midline. Yeah, but couldn't like the D value be one? No, because one will not be the middle. And so it's at zero. This can't be the middle of the way. I'm so confused. Follow me? Yeah. Now, I could use cosine, but not a vertical shift, a horizontal shift. But this will still be zero in this case, 
Okay. Because the middle of the graph is still sea level. Wait, but couldn't you give us a problem where the, it, the middle is one? So could we use sine with a positive one or cosine? Or like either? You will be given problems that don't have a midline of zero, that have a midline of one or 50 or whatever. 1,000. Yes. And you can always use sine or cosine. Okay, this is a really good question. Okay. You can always use sine or cosine. I typically try to pick the right trig function so I don't have a phase shift. Okay. So if the graph starts in the middle, I use sine. Could I use cosine? Yes, but then I'm going to have to have a phase shift. Okay. If the graph starts at the top or bottom, I'm going to use cosine. I could use sine, but again, then I'm going to have to apply a phase shift. So that kind yeah, of answer yeah, your question? I, I, yeah, I get yeah, the middle here is zero, so the d value will be zero. Yeah. We could use cosine, but if we use cosine, that I'd have to, basically the original cosine starts here, I have to shift it left so far. Okay, and I don't want to mess with that. Not that. Okay, so the period is 8. That's 2 pi divided by b has to equal 8, right? Because 2 pi divided by the b value equals the period. <coughs> Multiply by b, divide by 8. That was probably a lot. Here you go. Pi over 4. Pi over 4. <coughs> Can you just put 8 in for B? No. Are you joking me? Oh, wait, yeah, never mind. Yep. Okay. Remember, the period is not the B value. The period is not the B value. You use the period to get the B value. You use the period to find the B value. Yeah, I meant, I meant like put it in for like just 2 pi over 8, and then it would just be pi over 4. Okay, so that ends up, the math ends up working, yes. Yeah. I'm with you now. Yeah. Yes, you can do that. Because they'll just end up taking, they'll flip flop, right? Because you'll multiply by B, then you'll divide by 8, so they'll just end up taking each other's place. So. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to talk, because then everyone's going to think the B value is the period. Yeah, but it's not. Okay? All right, so then. Then it said, determine, hey listen up, it said determine the height of the buoy at three seconds. Well, what do you do? Just put three in for y or x. Put three determine in. the height. Oh. So determine the y value yeah. when yeah. x equals three seconds. Yeah, Nick. So plug a three I'm in for x, Tyler. see yeah, what you get for y. y. This is part B. This was part B on the question, yes. So determine what the height is at 3 seconds, and then it says determine what the height is at 12 seconds, okay? Um, 12, I'm guessing you can figure out just by looking at the graph. It goes in segments of 2. Well, 8 seconds to here, so that means it must have been 4 seconds to here, so 4, 8, and then zero 12. Division. So I can tell you that one just by looking at the graph that I drew. 12 seconds, the height's going to be 0. 3 seconds, eh, somewhere in here. I don't know. It's going to be about negative point. I got to plug three in to get my answer because I can't tell from the graph. Make sure you're in radian mode. Make sure you're in radian mode when you plug a number in for x and you're taking the sign of that number. You've got to be in radian mode or you'll get the wrong answer. Why does it have to be in radian? Because every sine graph and cosine uh, graph is always in radian. Oh, so like to put them in like the graph, I have to have my calculator in radian? I can't tell if my calculator's in radians. To put them in on a graphing calculator, yeah. you'll want your... It's going to assume you're in radians anyway, I think. Well, no, no, you will have to adjust that. Y is equal to... Wait, so then would that be right? Negative 0.06. That does not seem right. 
Are you motoring in? You're in degrees, aren't you? Yeah I, don't know, yeah, I don't know how to change it. I saw this in D, but I don't know how to change it. You want me to look? Oh, mode setup? Yeah. I got negative 1.1. <laughs> oh, Wait, how do you get ready in mode? What the heck just happened? Set, I, found, I, know yeah, I gotta shut this off. <laughs>